Greetings, fellow citizens of this beautiful planet. Okay, should we support secession? I've been thinking a lot about secession, how it would be possible, what is preventing it, do we need a federal government? Do we need a global economy? Do we really need anything we cannot provide for ourselves? So let's take this one question at a time, starting with the last question. Do we really need anything we cannot provide for ourselves? Well, that would depend on your chosen lifestyle and your perception of what you need and what you want. Some of us believe we need all that we want. This is a great deception. Through advertising, we have been programmed to believe we cannot live without what they are selling. Really? The American dream has been so manipulated that most of us have even accepted our own enslavement. We all now believe we have to live by their system in order to survive. Isn't that convenient? To some extent, this might be true, but it doesn't have to be that way. The key to solving such a conundrum is to look at life from a new and different perspective. One our puppet masters surely don't want us to even consider. Example. Separate need from want. Why do you want it? Because they have made it look so attractive via their advertising? What will happen if you don't get what you want? Will your life end? Of course not. We have to look at distractions. Many of us get so caught up with the things we think we want that we even forget why we want them. What is truly important to you? Why is it important to you? Does it make you happy? Or is the pursuit of acquiring what you want and think you need actually making you miserable? Are you happy? Do you truly enjoy your life? Let's look at the Christmas holiday, a supposedly most enjoyable occasion. Many of us have bought into the propaganda that it's okay to even go into debt buying gifts. Go into debt buying gifts. How is this okay? Why, why would we do this? Is this really necessary? Or have we entrapped ourselves into a behavior that mostly makes us miserable and completely contradicts the celebrated occasion? We rush and rush through the malls at the worst and most crowded time of the year to make sure we buy expensive gifts, which most of us can't afford, taking care not to leave anyone out. Why? To impress our loved ones? Really? How messed up is that? Think back in your own life. Do you even remember the gifts you received? Or do you remember the family gatherings, the meals, the great meals, the stories, the holiday music? We have allowed the producers of useless products to convince us that we need their crap when all we really want is to share special moments with those we love. Now if buying a product brings you some satisfaction, ask yourself why is that? They have turned us into purchasers. They want us to buy all their products whether we need them or not. Many people even qualify for the label of shopaholic. They confuse the temporary feeling they get of satisfaction for happiness. When the truth is, they are shopaholics because such a feeling can only be temporary. We need to take back our lives. Just because our parents did it this way doesn't mean we should. We need to evolve with progress, not regress. We must stop buying what they are selling. Which brings us back to our next question. 
Is secession possible? Of course it is. It is built into the Constitution for a reason. The very reason we need it now, when a government has decided it is more important than the people. When they forget why we hired them. When they abuse what we have given them. What is preventing us from seceding from the Union? Well, us. Our laziness. Our complacency. We want not to concern ourselves with such trivial matters. <laughs> trivial. Unreal. Do we need the federal government? This is a big question. To answer this question, we need to ask, what was the original objective of forming such a union? Clearly the feds do not understand or care for boundaries which were set in order to prevent us, the people they supposedly are serving, from setting up another colonial society, which is exactly why we left Europe their kings and queens in the first place. I also believe that we are not all accepting the fact that we are not clear on who is really running our federal governments. We all know that via their lobbyists, bankers, the insurance companies, the pharmaceutical industry, and their other large companies, are aggressively pursuing what is in their best interest, and more often than not get exactly what they want. So what was the original objective for the Union? Well, it was very limited, and for good reason. Most legislative responsibilities were left to the states, because they were local, where the people who hired them could be involved and keep a close eye on what their employees were up to, fire them if they were abusing the powers given to them by the people. This is not so easy with the federal government. They have separated themselves from their employers. Now, they even tell their employers what to do. How upside down is that? Okay, without going into depth about the original objectives and why and whom's interest they were looking out for, in the end, we have a very limited federal government. However, we have allowed them to expand by looking the other way believing their propaganda because it is easier than admitting they're lying to us. Because then we might have to do something about it. Well, the time has come where we have no choice. The truth is that there are some very evil, self-serving puppet masters directing most of our government's leaders. We need to separate ourselves from them. It is not working. They no longer do what they are told. Think about it. We the people don't want to take over the rest of the world. So who does? Every state has their own constitution and elected leaders. The federal highway system and the armed forces and other necessary federal duties can be handled by a concession of our local leaders. Each state can impose a fixed tax which can be adjusted and justified based upon the previous year's needs. We can get back to a prosperous and meaningful lifestyle. It will start by you paying more attention to how and what you spend your money on. This monetary system is still influenced greatly by you. Start separating yourselves from the sinking ship it is going down anyway. The sooner you remove yourself and stop depending on them, by not buying what they are selling, the better off you will be. At the same time, we are taking back control and our sovereignty. Stop shopping and buying things you don't really need. Buy local. Buy fresh. If you have to buy something from Walmart or some other huge conglomerate, do you really need it? Learn how to can and store food. Get to know your neighbors. Set up small community meetings to address individual needs and other local concerns. Collect and store non-GMO seeds. Plant personal and community gardens. 
barter amongst yourselves, share talents and abilities. You will be surprised to find out, while we are all different, we are all really the same. It is our uniqueness that makes us all so beautiful. And we are all beautiful. Thanks for watching. Feel free to remix this video in order to get the word out. And please leave your comments. I am very interested in your thoughts. Subscribe to this channel to be notified of all future uploads. Cheers!